I'm Michael Real, and this is RealUrbanNews.com. Join us for a candid conversation with actor Lou Temple, one of the stars of The Walking Dead. How long have you been cool? Man, I was cool. I was I was as cool as my grandfather. So mm -hmm. ever since I was with my granddad is how cool I've been, which is since the beginning. But he was a cool dude. And uh, New Orleanian, uh, he appreciated um, style. He appreciated um, uh, manners, politeness. Sure, sure. He, uh, he, he appreciated respect, hard work. Uh, he appreciated humor, revelry. And uh, these were just all things that were instilled upon us. Uh, we, uh, we were raised right. And so I think uh, he used to say life, life is too long not to have fun. Sure. Everyone says, yeah, life's too short. He'd say, oh, it's too long. You'd be here 70, 80 years and be in a bad mood. That, that's a long time to be upset. He said, it's too long to have, have no fun. Those qualities, that charm, that coolness, uh, saying thank you and being polite. Yeah. You brought that to Hollywood. I feel like that was the thing that I was going to bring anywhere. That's that's the thing that I bring. Um, I like people. I like being a person. Sure. Uh, so I think that, um, you know, people will ask, I have a buddy, uh, they'll ask him, where are you from? And he'll say, the planet Earth, man. And I sort of feel like that. And no matter where I am is where I'm at. And so I, 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 do, uh, I do think that there are, are some, some real simple absolutes that will get you a long way. And um, uh, manners, politeness, respect, compassion, uh, sensitivity. You know, and what I mean by sensitivity is field of depth of being sensitive. You and I are having a visit now, but I know there's a man over in the room working real hard and hoping he gets paid tonight so that he can, I can uh, attend to what is going on in his life. And I think that's, if we all spread our field of depth of sensitiveness outside of our little comfort zone, which is us, sure. and um, I think that, that we would feel one another a little bit more. And I appreciate that. So yeah, I brought I brought those things to Hollywood and I've had that stuff beat up pretty good. I've come home with some some black eyes and, and some some real questions about being here. But then in the same vein, I've also had some amazing experiences where I get a chance to meet incredibly talented, gifted artists and, and wonderful people outside of whatever their product or their commerce is. So so it's been a joy, you know. That talent and uh, those gifts had you positioned on one of the top shows in the country, yeah, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, I mean, it's so interesting uh, in regard to its popularity because um, everybody has a theory. You know, I think it's, a, it's, it, it's exactly, I think exactly why it's popular is why we talk about it because uh, it it hits on so many so many issues. It it is uh, it's about economics. We're struggling. It's about civil unrest. This country has civil unrest. We're not far from civil war. We're going we're going to the polls uh, soon to show our civil unrest, sure. our civil war. Uh, we're we're mad at the one percenters. We'd like to get you know we'd like to get after them like a zombie. Uh, we deal with health. Poverty. These are all things that metaphorically are zombies. Mm -hmm. You know, the banks are a zombie. The the man that holds your mortgage, the, the hedge fund that took all your money for your college for your child or, or your savings. These things. Those are all zombies that I feel like we are having to um, to deal with every day. And so it's survival. And I think what's really interesting is how we are able to survive. Um, day to day and connect it with, with this show. And then we get into the bigger pictures which are what would you do? You know everyone sort of attaches themselves. What would you do if all the moral 
uh, lines were erased, if all the codes were taken away. Is it okay to sleep with my best friend's wife? <laughs> to reprocreate the world? Right. Is it okay to take, to steal from this church? Do I have faith? Yeah. Is it okay not to own up to my grandfather's respect? or it's legacy. These things. Can we just let it all go? Some people really like that. That's a clean slate. Right, right. And so I find that that is what is vitally interesting about the show, and I think that's what what the water cooler conversation is. On Explain Monday. your character. Uh, Axel. Axel is a, is a, a prisoner who has been found in this new sanctuary, this prison that, that our survival group, after sure. two years, have, have come upon. Uh, Axel and four other prisoners had been locked away in a commissary uh, with food and water, the means to survive for 10 months, but without a real awareness of what was going on in the world. So they had witnessed a riot. They had witnessed an episode in the prison, but were not uh, privy to the idea that this was apocalyptic and going on in the world. So when they're found by our survivalists, it is it's mind blowing, you know. It's devastating. All that you knew, all that you had hoped for, that you had held on to, just gone. And now, what do you do? One of the prisoners that that's the perfect world for him. Maybe another guy's a follower. Two other guys, myself and and Vincent, who plays Oscar, we're trying to toe the line. We're not bad guys. We've been in prison. I'm a pharmaceutical guy, you know. A little oxycotton, a little sure. crystal meth, a little right. sale, a little business, and uh, breaking and entering for, for Oscar. I think we're men who are in prison for the right reason. We broke the law. The law. But we're not bad people. And I think the second. Not hardened criminals. Not murderers. I feel like that's why we have. Uh, that we have been able to survive. At the point when Rick Grimes has a choice whether to take us out in, in the second episode or to allow us to live, uh, we appeal to his humanity. And there's some really interesting, there's some really interesting dynamics there too. I don't know that I'm uh, privy to talk about that in, on, on your show, but there's, there's some socioeconomic things that are so poignant uh, so I'm just I'll talk about it. I beg for my li my life. White people are entitled to be heard. Sure. So begging or making things uh, a little um, mess messy, Iago, uh, manipulative. I think other races aren't don't have such an ear, so they don't tend to waste time with that. Who's going to listen? So when I beg for my life, and he says, "You do what you got to do." never begged for my life. That's a lot of pride. We know that, right? Sure. We know what that is. Sure. That's an interesting dynamic that this show brings to play. Who's talking about that? And so that's what I really like about what the show is. And then we go from there. Uh, my character Axel is a he's a he, he's a southern man. He is a um, he's a mystery. We don't know what's underneath. We see some tattoos but we're, we haven't really peeled back. Uh, he he's a nice guy. He, he, he has compassion. He, he's a little bit of a sad sack. Um, he is. Uh, he, he he wants to fit in. He really wants to fit in. He 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 likes to be attached. He's not a loner, and so he is. Um, he's doing his best to put his best foot forward to be ingratiated by the survivalists, to be invited into the group. If I've got to survive, I'd like to do it with y'all. Will you have me? And. Um, he has to prove himself, so he works hard, and that's through humility and humor, and you know, however I can help, which which he can be a little overbearing. With I could help you fix. I'm a mechanic, I'm a tree mechanic by by trade. Uh, uh, you know, and and my man, he's just like you. You know, come on. You know, we're we're trying too hard. You know, I, no, no, no. I think they I think they like us. You know. Uh, so we have, I think, a certain levity that we also bring to the show. I think there's some, some lightness and some humor that pre people appreciate. It's such an intense show on every beat that every now and again, ha, it's nice to smile or laugh. And I think that helps. That, 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 
cliche question. Are you yeah. surprised by the success? Of the show? Yeah. Uh, yes. Not because it's not a good show. Not because it's not written well. I think I'm surprised by the ever elusive moment where the audience and the show finds in. I think the show and its audience are simpatico. Sure. I don't think that the I don't think the production takes for granted at all the intellect mm -hmm. or the compassion and sensitivity of its audience. And I think the audience appreciates that and respects it. I don't think they take for granted any of the decisions made by the production. I don't think anyone's sitting there going, they don't know what they're doing if I were running it. I think it's a it's a real happy marriage, and that surprises me because that doesn't you know every now and again that happens on some of our really great shows. This is a special environment, it is. special show for you to be on. But it, clearly, it, I mean, I, I'm so uh, blessed, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm so uh, you know awarded and, and gifted to be on this show. It's a hard working show. I was so impressed when I showed up and watched before I went to work how hard these people work from producers to writers to the actors to the crew makeup wardrobe camera electrical grips technical advisors stunts art department everybody special effects makeup incredible hard work Lou Temple my pleasure a southern gentleman well you're so kind to have me Mike I enjoyed it thank, thank you. you thank you yes thank you. indeed